Okay, right now I'm going to tie up for you a stone fly, and it's just a rubber leg stone fly. Um, this one's going to be tied with the color pattern that I use when I go steelhead fishing. So I've got a Daiichi 1760 hook in a size 4. I tie this fly in size uh, 4s and 6s, and depending on how big I want to go, sometimes down to a 2, and the type of hook it is as well. Um, so <clears throat> I've got some UTC 140. I'm going to go ahead and start that. As well as before that, I've got some lead, lead wraps on the hook there to kind of give it some weight, get it down. Um, a lot of times you can tie this with a tungsten bead. You can tie it with uh, a lot more lead if you want it to be a heavier fly, depending on the type of water you're going to be fishing. So after I start my thread, I'm going to bring the, bring the thread back and I'm going to tie on a, a rubber leg tail here. I'm using Silly Legs, black and red. They're black with a little bit of red flecking in them. I'm going to go ahead and just tie it in, kind of splaying it out like a... Uh, any tail on any any type of fly. After that, I'm going to take some brown or coffee colored chenille. I'm going to go ahead and start that right behind the lead. I don't need to strip the chenille back. Um, this is going to help kind of give me a little bit of a uh, close the gap in the height difference between the body of the hook right here and my lead wraps. I'm going to fill that in just a little bit with my thread. Now this pattern was shown to me by a friend of mine named Chris Cutler. Uh, we, sometimes we go up to the Salmon River in Idaho to go steelhead fishing. And uh, one year he kicked my butt. He caught a lot of fish. And most of them were caught on this fly here. So needless to say, since then, I don't go up there without, uh, I don't know, a dozen of these or so in my fly box. Okay, after we get our chenille tied on, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take some more of these silly legs and we're going to we're going to tie them on kind of in an X pattern, one on each side of the hook, as so. There's the first one. Silly legs, I like to cut them back to about a two inch piece, a little more workable that way. Okay, I'm going to go and I'm, I'm going to make these wraps over these silly legs about, about the distance of two wraps of chenille. And you'll see what I mean when I, when I bring my chenille forward, but about like that. At that point, I'm going to move these silly legs and I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to wrap it up behind the eye the hook, pull my silly legs up, and just put a very loose wrap over top of them so that they're out of the way. Now at this point, to make this fly a little more durable, I'm going to take the underside of this fly and I'm going to put just a little bit of super glue. So when I bring the uh, chenille forward, it's going to kind of get smudged around in that glue and hopefully make this fly to where it can get chewed on by a couple of great bigs. Still head and not fall apart if needed. Okay, and I'm going to wrap this forward up to my rubber legs and I'm going to unwrap them. There's one wrap, two wraps of chenille in between the rubber legs. I'm going to take this thread. Those rubber legs can sometimes get right in the way. It's pretty typical when tying this fly. So one thing we can do at this point to kind of keep those rubber legs tamed back so they're not right in our way is we can take a piece of copper wire or whatever you've got handy and just put a wrap over them and hold them back out of the way. Our chenille, not real happy with the way it's sitting, so I'm just going to unwrap a little bit, keep it pulled up real tight. Bring my thread back. There we go, just tie it in a little bit better there. Okay, at this point I'm going to take some hot pink chenille for the head of this fly. And I am going to strip the chenille back this time just to give me uh, a head that's not quite, not too bulky. I'm going to go ahead and tie that in. Okay, and at this point, the last piece of material we're going to tie in is actually a rubber leg antenna. Pretty typical rubber leg stonefly pattern here. Um, the colors, uh, 
probably the biggest ticket that helped this fly catch catch stillhead. The brown, the coffee chenille, and then the hot pink. Okay, once again for durability, I'm going to put just a little bit of super glue right underneath this chenille. There we go, teeny little bit. Go ahead and take the hot pink. Make just a couple of wraps coming forward. Make sure you don't crowd the eye. Uh, that's one of the biggest frustrations when you're not tying with the bead. If you uh, crowd that eye, it makes it very difficult to finish the fly and also makes for kind of a funny looking fly. Okay, now we're just going to whip finish. This fly is done. Like I said, pretty typical standard rubber leg stone fly. Um, but you'd be amazed and impressed at how many still had this fly actually catches. Um, it's an awesome pattern. I've been really, really satisfied with it. It's very easy to tie, very quick to tie up. Um, the materials are very inexpensive. Um, you can buy it at, uh, I mean, you can, you can tie it up for very cheap. It's going to catch a lot of fish. And, and it's durable as well. It doesn't fall apart. Uh, last thing we're going to do... Take our rubber legs. I like to keep them about an inch. Gotta keep them all close to the same length. The tail on the antenna sometimes. Uh, I keep them a little bit longer. I think they kind of drive the stillhead crazy in a good way. They wiggle an awful lot. Uh, stillhead really like they really like that movement. That's kind of what I found. So there you go. Good luck, guys.